Welcome to Weld.com. Uh, we've got our Pentagon fire pit and we are, we're completely fit up with all of our raw parts. We started out and with our design and we cut parts, we cut our legs, we cut our base plate with our holes and air holes in it, clean out holes. And we came in and cut our flat panels down on bottom and we came back and put our last five panels with artwork. We have MIG Monday. We have the Weld.com text. We have our Cali College Athletic Tiger. And then it goes back to the Weld.com and the Tiger. So um, I'm gonna start welding this. And uh, again, as I mentioned in another session, our, our, we're gonna have a little bit of variations in our fit. You know, naturally we'd try to get everything with the exact same gap. It's okay, it, you know, that's our intent, but it doesn't, doesn't happen that way all the time. Sometimes we get it, get it real good. So uh, I'm running off an ESOB Rebel, 110 volt uh, input, 030 wire, 7525 gas, about 25 cubic feet per hour. And some of these that are a little bit more opened up than others, most of them are pretty consistent but you will see me change a volt and an amp setting or volt and a wire feed seed. This one here is a little bit open, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go after it with a 16.5 voltage and 195. And when I turn this, actually I may turn it twice and I'll catch this one over here. It's kind of wide as well. And what I'm, I, I'll probably weld those two and then I'll change it to the 17.2 or 17.5 and 220. And then I'll, I'll weld the rest. Now, <clears throat> I wanna go after these seams, all of them in a downhill. And I'll probably be rolling this around. When I do a seam like this, it's got a point right down here at the very bottom. I'm probably gonna come in here and put a soft tack right down here at the bottom so that I can stop on top of that. Why? Because it, when I'm running this bead down here, when I get down to the very bottom, instead of there being a real big hot mass of, of molten metal, I, I want to stop on top of this so I can make it consistent height. I don't want to blow out a big hole. I am going to come back and round these off nicely. Matter of fact, we're going to come back and we intend on making all of these, all of these seams. We're just going to sand them. I'm going to flat sand them across two planes and probably just gently roll them with the sander. I might even take the sander and just flat edge it or take a file and go down through there, but we'll, we'll see how it finishes out when we get there. Again, uh, all downhill. It's eighth inch material. We'll get plenty of weld depth of fusion and penetration. And, uh, you know, we say that this is a fire pit and it's going to warp. It won't. We've had some big fires in here and they're kind of fun. So it'll be fine. Uh, they might pop and ping at a, at, you know, on occasion. The metal will relax and move a little bit, but it's not going to warp and look funny. It's, it's, it's going to keep its shape quite well. So again, uh, I'm going to get my, my gear on, my safety glasses, and I'm going to be between seven, uh, 16 5, 195 on these seams and probably 17, 220. We'll, we'll just see how it goes. I'm, you know, I'm one to always adjust a machine. I don't just come in and set it on one thing and weld everything that way. I kind of recognize some situations where I want to turn it up a little bit and make things blend. And Okay, so let me get my gear on. I'll be right back.
I did these outside corners about 16.5, turned one of them down. Uh, now that I'm in the confluence and I've got a little heavier meat here, I'm going to go 17.5 and 2.25 on my wire feed speed. This downhill weld, this outside corner, I was just barely moving it back and forth side to side just to kind of carry that round metal down through there. And this one here, I'm probably just going to do a very slight back and forth stitch. I'm not going to do any side to side. I'm not trying to build the weld up hardly at all. Structurally, it's going to be fine. So I'm not trying to do anything special with it. I don't want to leave it too thin. I just, I just want it to go in there nice and about 3 16 Now this weld is digging in and penetrating quite a bit and I want that because I'm, I'm out here on these very corners and this weld is also laying really flat. Now that's fine. If you could zoom in and get that, that's, that's down inside there pretty good. And I'll even come back in here on the inside and put some heavier tacks. Again, you know, I'm not trying to over weld anything. Right now, I want to stop and point something out that I do quite a bit of, and it's called uh, stopping on top of my starts. Instead of me turning it this way and starting up here on finished weld, I'll only do that once on this particular weld out. I will turn it this way. This will be my second weld. I'll start up here and I'll stop on top of that. Again, not critical because we still have this to do, which we're going to stop on top of. I like to stop on top of weld metal so it makes it nice blended finish. Something didn't feel right there. I don't know what it was. I'm going to go down a little bit in my voltage here to 17.2 and see if it doesn't whirl a little better. That's great. <clears throat> that sounded good, complete with the porosity. I noticed that right away. Uh, let me check my let me check my gas here real quick. Oh, I had to stop and, and uh, I noticed I made a setting change and I started this weld and I welded about an inch. It sounded kind of funny and I, I stopped. I noticed some porosity, so I stopped and, and ground that. Now, that could have been caused by the very edge of this plasma not being cleaned and I'm down inside there. Um, I don't know. I do know that one of these legs, when I was cutting it with the plasma, it's like uh, the plasma wanted to start and instead of maintaining the cut length that kept going up, so I restarted one of these legs. I think this is it. I thought I had cleaned that dross off pretty good. Maybe I didn't, but you know, things happen. So I stopped and ground it out. And uh, it's not that bad. We're going to weld over the top of it. Again, structurally, it's not going to interfere with the integrity of this piece that we're building. And while I was at it, I went ahead and kept the grinder and pre-cleaned the mill scale on the edge of the weld. So hopefully that'll help. I also did bump my gas up a little bit. So, all right, here we go. And that welded just fine. It sounded just like it's supposed to. It looks okay. It does. It is a little black because I'm pulling this. So I'm going to keep going. This is like backstep welding. I'm stopping on top of the finished weld.
I heard a little difference in sound and some side in there. It acted like it was getting kind of squirrely. I can assure you I have a, something on the end of my contact tip, so I need to clean this real quick. I'll be right back. I had to stop and make a, uh, a contact tip change. I noticed a little flutter in my settings. It, it welded okay, it just, um, I didn't like it. So I've made a tip change to clean things up here. Let's keep going. Okay, from here, while I'm here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put just a couple of reinforcement welds in here. Some of these have penetrated completely through. I mean, they're just, it's just 100% penetration, but I am gonna go back and kind of tack a couple of corners here. Okay, from here, I'm gonna continue with my downhill welds and I'm just, I'm gonna turn this thing up, side down, and come down to this point so that when I do, when I work myself up, I'm, I'm always gonna be stopping on top of a finished weld. Well, this concludes our project. Again, we were doing a we're doing a little Pentagon fire pit here. I think originally we stated we were going to do this in a four-part series, but after welding this, you know, I, I think the last part was going to be finish blending these welds, and and I just you know, this is a MIG welding show. This is this is MIG Monday, so I think I just want to leave the welds in there. I mean, it shows a level of of craftsmanship it's obvious they're mig welds i came back and buffed these lightly just to get the glass off of them i had a wire change right here i ran out of wire and i changed wire it's a little bump some of these in the corners where i stopped obviously we come back and blend just a little bit and when we when we put our high heat black paint on here it'll it'll look nice again i'm not it's like if i sanded all these it's like i'm trying to hide something and i'm not so i think I think we just made the decision we're going to end this in our right here in a in a three-part series uh you know if any more finish that i would do that doesn't really require camera work you don't need to see it but i would come in here i like rounding i like rounding corners uh down here on these points they're not that sharp um, the welds do help out i would continue to take the the silicone deposits off I would take a, a mill file and take any uh, sparks that may have stuck to the surface. I feel some over here. I'm rubbing the majority of them off. Down here there tends to be some. This is that weld that I was telling you kind of lays in there flat. I'm rubbing my finger on it. It's super smooth. So, you know. Uh, I want to give a shout out to Steiner. These Mega, Mega MIG gloves are very comfortable. And the Pro Series jacket. 
you know, if you guys could figure out how to run some air conditioning through that, it'd be really cool. Um, but it, that's a fine product. I was not uncomfortable. I didn't have any sparks on me at all. Uh, Arc One for the hood. Um, you know, I'm, I'm old school. I grew up with pipe liners. I think I've only had six hoods in my entire 40 something year career. One of them I kicked off the top of a tank because it was so uncomfortable. One of them I gave away. The rest of them I still own. Um, but this, I, I like this. This is very, it's fast, it's comfortable. Uh, when I was tacking this up, you know, I used to, you know, I used to do the bad thing. I'd, I'd wear a hat and I'd just look down and tack. And I know that's wrong, but you know, I'm sure some of you got into that habit. I don't do that anymore with this hood. I'll wear this hood, keep it down. Uh, I have it set on number nine and uh, boom, it's quick. It's fast. I can acquire my tack and my vision and I don't need to, uh, I don't need to wait around. I can keep going. Not that I'm trying to go super fast, but you get a rhythm going when you're fabricating something like this and it's kind of fun. So uh, good hood. I like that. And again, uh, thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the videos. New videos will come out every, every Monday. I'm Bob Moffitt with Weld.com. Thanks for watching.